Yes, uh, when we were in Moncton, you talked about the process of getting your TUE and everything with USADA. What's the update now that we're here on fight week with that? Yeah, uh, so they've denied me once again, uh, but they never say no. They say they want more information, and unfortunately part of that is more prescription drugs. Um, again, in a, in a day and age where we all know about the opioid crisis, both here in Canada, um, the process uh, to take a medicine as prescribed by my family doctor and my medical uh, cannabis providers uh, at Souls Health Network, um, you know, they're behind me, you know, 100% of the way, and we're going to keep pushing forward um, because... Uh, at this point, you know, um, again, I am fighting this this Saturday. I'm going to give it my all, but uh, in many ways, I'm fighting at a competitive disadvantage um, because I'm not allowed to medicate as prescribed by my doctor. Um, still a huge believer in uh, clean sport and USADA and everything they do. I wouldn't necessarily even put this towards them. I think this is an outdated mindset that um, a lot of uh, different companies, uh, not different companies, uh, different organizations and uh, stigma that kind of remains and that's part of the reason why I want to um, use my platform not just for myself but for all Canadian athletes. Are you in pain right now or because you cannot take it? It's an ongoing process um, whether it's um, you know falling asleep and waking up with uh, waking up with um, tremendous pain throughout the night it's a radiating um, you know condition that is always lingering and it never really has a schedule <laughs> and that's always the most upsetting thing um, and again one of the issues uh, or one of the comments in regards to their, their most recent denial basically said oh you can you can use it beforehand because of the UFC's policy in regards to not testing in in competition but again leading up to a fight is the hardest part of a fight because um, you know in regards to pain management I mean, it's the last little part and obviously with uh, cutting weight and other things that trigger um, my bilateral neuropathic pain it's it's something I've I've been living with and I'll have to continue to live with at this point did you take other mitigation leading up to the fight during the camp or you decided not to um, what's it called there's certain medications that uh, don't really, um, you know, take on the the full uh, brunt of it, but it's again something I just have to deal with, and it puts me at a competitive disadvantage uh, compared to other athletes that can medicate with more first line medications like Vicodin. There's been a lot of talk heading into this fight on uh, social media and everything like that. Usually, you're the one who's doing it, and the opponent doesn't reciprocate. But you've had had that in this fight where Eric sort of chimed back. Do you like that heading into a fight like this, the back and forth? Yeah, no. Uh, it's all it's friendly back and forth. There's no real animosity or whatever like that. Um, he's a competitor through and through. He's going to try and knock my block off, and I'm just going to show him the difference between chess and checkers. How much do you feel like him having that fight recently against Thiago Santos, which was a grueling fight for him, and having this quick turnaround fight in you is going to play into your favor on Saturday? Um, you know. No, I, I still think he has a very, uh, uh, a very, uh, uh, the mentality of his is very much pressure, very much going forward. And like I mentioned, he's going to try and knock my block off. That's his, that's his shtick. Um, he's a southpaw. He's left-handed, and um, you know he'll throw three, four, five lefts in a row, um, and uh, that allows me to know kind of what is up. Um, obviously, in regards to his own health, that's up to him. He took the fight, and I'm very grateful for it. Um, he's a competitor through and through and uh, a true fighter. Um, I really love his hunger and his, um, you know, uh, mentality of I'll fight anyone everywhere. But unfortunately, that's here and against me, and uh, that's an losing uh, factor. Elias, Elias it's, uh, it's 18th fight. This your 18th fight. Do you, uh, do you walk around feeling like a veteran? Uh, slowly but surely, and part of that is the aspect of uh, it allows you to truly believe in yourself, and the uh, the proof's in the pudding. I've I've had my hand raised more often than not, and even um, in, in the in the losing fashions that I did, um, there was much to learn from and much to uh, be proud of. And uh, I'm going to be bringing it all back full circle uh, in Toronto, my hometown. And uh, you know, I, I really uh, I'm looking forward to the win because that's what's going to happen. When I started talking to you, you were one and all. Yeah. You were one and all. That was only five, six years ago? Give or take, yeah. Yeah, it's absurd, man. You should be very proud. Uh, appreciate it. Um, you know, again, it's it's one step moving forward every single time. I have a, a tough competitor in front of me. Um, but with that being said, I, I also have enough mat time, and I think that's where my advantage kind of really hangs in. Uh, you know, Eric's obviously taken on some uh, really great fighters. We have a, a fighter um, in mutual, a mutual fighter in common uh, in regards to Tiago Santos. But um, he made the same mistakes I made three years ago. So I think that um, competitive advantage is definitely 
definitely there. Um, he's a raw, talented athlete, um, but there, there's many, many, many different things, or sorry, there's many levels to the difference between a great fighter and uh, an athlete. And, uh, and again, I think um, uh, the, the aspect of uh, being in there for so long makes me a, a more well-rounded uh, martial artist. Oh, you're on like a really nice run now at this point. Four wins in the last five. What do you feel like you stand in, the, in this crowded in a way to well, currently 13th or 14th, um, obviously. Uh, and, you know, Eric Anders is a, a very tough individual. He's uh, just about right up there. He Again, he has that killer mentality, as we've seen uh, in regards to his debut against Rafael uh, Natal. Um, and then you also see the Tim Williams fight, where he was arguably losing part of it and then uh, came up with that, you know, kick to send uh, Tim's head into the bleachers. Um, so, you know, he has a... A tough, tough um, a mentality to him, and he's a badass. Um, but I think, uh, again, time and time again, I've been in there with, you know, more well-rounded fighters, uh, tougher fighters, uh, collectively in regards to my overall record. Um, even if you kind of dig into his. Um, into his record and uh, previously and uh, before the UFC, some of the guys you know had 50-50 uh, f uh, records and whatnot. Uh, but that is still mat time that allow him to uh, you know get into his rhythm and get into his his style. It's a, it's a ferocious style that puts pressure. But I, I've been here before and uh, I'll be keep uh, keep being here because uh, I'm uh, I'm in top 15 and soon to be uh, higher. Do you have any expectations as to when you'll finally get this TUE? Because I know you've said you think you'll get it, but do you have any ideas as to when that'll come? Well, out? yeah, part of it is it's quite obvious that they don't want to do it because uh, the precedent that will set, not just for myself, but for many other athletes, because it will create an avenue for uh, and a roadmap for them to do it. So, again, um, my next fight is against Eric Anders, but uh, it's not just against one man. It's against the stigma of medical cannabis. So I'll, I'll keep pushing forward because, um, you know, this fight is bigger than myself. Obviously, we're fighting in Canada, and Canada finds itself um, as a, in the forefront of um, you know breaking down prohibition and um, that has in many ways uh, not only encouraged me but almost put me in an obligation to, to fight for others and that's where I, I want to do with my platform. Two-part question Elias, um, are you hosting an after party after the fight? Yes, I am. Yeah, one would argue the after party is my body, but um, <laughs> joking, <laughs> half kidding. Uh, what do you call it? I just, it's, it rhymes, whatever. Um, but uh, yes, I'll be fighting at the pint. Um, it's uh, right attached to the Skydome, I still call it that. Um, and uh, you're all welcome to come and have a beer with uh, the winner. Okay, part two is how do I get on that, but okay, I got you it. You can just reach me. You yeah. know, you got my number. I know, okay, thank you. <laughs> Slide in my DMs. You, uh, you cut a lot of weight, and I know one of the guys that's helping you uh, for your weight cut is Aaron Jeffrey, your teammate, who also sort of uh, does the nutrition side of things. What about him makes him the best guy for the job to help you with this? Um, well, obviously, going back even further than that, it, it is my 18th, 19th fight coming up, and um, you know I know my body. Uh, I walk around 200, 215 pounds uh, normally, uh, and uh, you know it's just a process that uh, you just have to. At this point, you, I better know my body, right? So Aaron Jeffrey, obviously, he's a, a friend, a training partner, and he's a, a whiz in his own right. Um, he'll be uh, here during uh, what do you call it, the Monday. Um, Sorry, Monday. The the Friday weigh-ins, early weigh-ins, and then uh, you know other people that I've been able to uh, work with in regards to uh, a friend and a, a, for, a former coach, uh, uh, Lachlan Chang, who's a, a wizard in his own right, and then also someone that's working with uh, Caitlin um, Coolidge. Uh, did I mess up her name? Coolidge. I always mess it up. There you go. Um, what's it called? Guys, I'm, I get hit in the head for a living. Um, but point being, uh, what's it called? Her new yes, exactly. her 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 um, her uh, uh, nutritionist as well. Um, Tony Ricci is someone that I've also worked with. So in many ways, um, you know, as someone grows as a martial artist, the. Uh, Personally, uh, they travel, like one of the things that I've done is travel and learn from the best from all over. And whether it's from Aaron Jeffries or Tony Ricci, I've been able to, you know, learn from the best. Another guy that I know you've trained with before is going to be making his UFC debut, and Kyle Nelson. Just tell people about Kyle if they're not familiar with him. He's got a big opportunity on Saturday. Yeah, big opportunity, huge heart. Now, obviously taking a fight on such short notice. Um, you know, always fear a man that is willing to take a fight on short notice because they're, rent they're, they're at least mentally ready. 
Um, did you watch Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury fight? Yes, I did. The harder, well, highlight, majority of the highlights in regards to all. The harder that uh, that Wilder tried to hit Fury, and the more frustrated he became, the mm -hmm. harder it was to hit him. That's Elias Theodoro fight. Yeah, the, again, the, I think there's uh, there's actually even a tie-in because I believe they're both from uh, Alabama as well in regards to uh, Almada's or uh, and uh, from uh, Bama. So uh, again, he's a tough competitor who's going to try and knock my block off, but you can't hit what you can't catch. Elias, uh, I want to ask you about the uh, your work on an independent movie about esports. I just want to know how's that going, and have you considered dabbling and actually like playing and streaming yourself, kind of like some other fighters have, you know, just for fun, or some of them doing, are doing it to make revenue, and like Sean O'Malley. Uh, how's the esports? Has all esports involvement going? Yeah, it's great. It's uh, in the process of uh, the funding and investment. Um, we have some really great um, conversations going, and uh, you know, obviously, I'm focused on my fight, and we'll be locking it up. For those that uh, don't know anything about the movie, it's called Last Hit. I play an MMA fighter, huge stretch, and I get injured, and I reinvent myself with competitive video games. So in many ways it's the wizard meets Southpaw. <laughs> Thanks a lot. No worries. Cheers. The Wizard's a great movie by the way. I know, <laughs> classic. That's why I referenced it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs>